Okay, so hello Achiever, I'm very glad to do this new video. I'm in Los Angeles and I met just yet yesterday in the restaurant an amazing guy. He's a kind of genius because he's doing many things. I would love to let you introduce yourself. Um, well, Martellus Bennett is my um, name. Jusui Martellus Bennett? Yes. Right? Yeah, so Martellus Bennett played for Chicago Bears, which is American football. I'm um, also a writer. Um, imaginator. Um, um, I just make stuff, so I'm a visionary architect. Wow. Which is a real cool way of saying I make stuff. <laughs> and I would love to know, how do you find the time between, because uh, you are a professional athlete, mm -hmm. and how do you find the time between your job as an athlete and also you, the, the time to be creative and, and work in other fields? Well, I, um, for me, I feel like time is really just schedule so time management which is a a gift uh, you have to learn how to manage time and when to do things and when not to work on things and how much time you have at each subject that you want to do or each discipline so um, for me it's just really good time management you know whether it's you know if i train or write early early in the mornings before i train then I hang out with my family then i may train again then i write and hang out with my family again so I eliminate things that are not essential, so I'm a, a what you would call essentialist. I only do the things that are essential to my life and my happiness. Cool. How did you become one of the most, uh, one of the top player in your in your field? Well, um, lots and lots of hard work. Um, I wasn't always one of the best, so I had to work my way up um, from middle school to high school to college um, to. To the NFL now. So uh, when I first started NFL, I was actually a backup. Uh, so someone was playing in front of me for four years, and then I left that team and I became a starter. And ever since then, I've just been ascending. So um, just constantly staying the course and believing in myself. Yes, and how do you do? Because some people struggle, are struggling to believe in themselves and believe they can succeed. So how do you do to believe in yourself? Well, really, I just envision where I want to be. So um, the job I want where I want to go, how many hours I'm going to work, how I'm going to get there. So I envision that, so I see myself there already while I'm in the process of getting there. So um, I think... Um, you did that from the beginning? Yes. Okay, and how did you learn to do, to do that? I don't know. I just, it just <laughs> felt like the right thing to do. Um, I just feel like if it's just like um, anywhere you want to go, um, if you travel in the world, there's usually a map. Yes. But when it comes to things that you're trying to do in life, there's not a map. So you have to create your own map to where you want to go. So I just figure I create a map because everywhere else I go, I have GPS that tells me to make a right, make a left, or, you know, how far something is away from the other place, point A to point B. So I just created my own road map of what I thought the steps I would need to take all the way to get there. Then I worked down, then I worked myself backwards. So I start with one out where I want to be. And then from there, I take, I imagine all the things I had to do to get there from where I am now, then I work my way back up. And what was your dream at the beginning when you had, when you were, let's say, 15 years old? What was your dream at 15 years old? Well, at 15, I had a lot of dreams. Well, I still have a lot of dreams. I think we're, um, a lot of people think you only get one dream, but I think you have as many dreams as you want. It's just how many can you catch? And I'm, a, and I'm what you call a dream catcher. And I do what you call dreamscaping. So it's land, like how you do landscaping, make everything pretty for how you want it to look. And that's how I do with each dream. So um, you ever watch Pokemon? Yes. You know, you gotta catch them, <laughs> you gotta catch them all. And, uh, so I felt like I had to catch them all. So um, for me at 15, you know, uh, it was NBA. Um, out of high school, I was in the NBA draft. Um, but my mom wanted me to go to college. And when I went to college, you know, it was NFL. And then, but the number one dream has always been the creative side, you know, um, to do movies and films and tell stories. And that's the one I'm still chasing. And that's why I'm here in Los Angeles now. And did you knew that becoming one of the top athletes can be, could be the first step to be able to achieve other goals? No, I just thought, no, I didn't think so. I think football was just a part of the journey and it was just part of, I end up getting to where I am right now, but I think there was another avenue that I could have been just as successful if I went down that road. Um, I think I just ended up traveling down this road where professional sports just happened to be the way that I went this way. And, you know, some, like I say, football is not my purpose, it's my platform. So um, I basically, you know, build up 
the things I want to do because you have so many eyes on you when you play professional sports. There's so many people, you know, they follow you, you know, kids look up to you. So you have a chance to use that platform for some good to teach kids that there's other things that they could do. So I use football as a platform to, to get my message out across the world. What do you think? Because there are, especially in Los Angeles, there are many celebrities um, in sports, movies, industries, but some, some of them has a big community, but they don't use that to share a positive message. What do you think about that? Well, I think um, just America as a whole is more about I than we. So everybody's trying to do what they could do to make themselves better. Um, and just kind of what the culture has transformed into. There's people who are around, they try to, you know, they build up other people, not just themselves. But um, with technology and everything else, all the kids, they grow up and they want to be the people that they see on TV. But only thing they see is the end result. They don't see all the work that it took to get there. So if there's a way you can show kids the process of working, like you don't just wake up and be Tom Cruise. You know, mm. Tom Cruise had to take acting classes, learn how to act better, you know, whether it's get himself in great shape and, you know, always nail his lines. But he wasn't just always Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise, at one point, no one knew him, but he worked his way up. Same thing with everybody else. So I think um, a lot of people, they work so hard that, and it took them so long to get where they are, that it's hard for them to try to give somebody else what they feel like would be the easy way in. They feel like they should work their way up too. Mm. And according to you, what could be the three... Uh, keys of success? Um, visualization, so visualizing everything. Um, you got to have imagination and visualize, so that kind of goes in the same thing. So I, you know, I put imagination and um, visualization <laughs> in the same thing. Um, you have to be passionate about what you want, what it is that you want to do, and you have to find balance. Mm. And how do you find balance? Um, for me, I find balance in um, saying no. Because um, a lot of times you can say yes to, like, there, if there's something I don't want to do 100%, you know, somebody's like, hey, let's go get a drink. You know, I kind of want to go out and have a drink, but I'm not 100% into it, so I just say no. Okay, so just, <laughs> just, just to be sure to understand, if you are not 100%, it's no. Yes. <laughs> yes, okay. Yeah, so if I really like, so if someone be like, oh, let's go get some ice cream. I love ice cream, so I'm like, yes, let's go get ice cream. There's not. So if there's any gray area, I usually say no. Which means, because if there's gray area, that means that it wasn't really something I want to do. It's not essential to my life. If we lim eliminate the non-essential things and only focus on the things that are essential to our days and our life, then we're more productive. What looks like a day for you? Uh, each day varies, um, but most days I start at 5.30. Okay. Um, this is usually when I wake up and I... Um, I brush my teeth first. Uh, <laughs> it's very important. <laughs> yeah. So I brush my teeth and then... Um, I'm very glad that you specify that because sometimes they, they, they forget. Yeah, they forget <laughs> to brush their teeth. And then by the time they get out, they're like, man, well, your breath smells like you didn't brush your teeth. But, <laughs> um, so, but from, from like 5.30 to 10 a.m., um, I write. So basically, um, I wake up and I just write whatever it is I'm working on. Yeah. And then from there, I have breakfast and I hang out with my wife and my daughter. What do you uh, eat? Do you have a special uh, way to eat? Well, usually I try, well, right now I try to eliminate decision making and what I'm going to eat because it's just, you know, so usually I eat oatmeal, uh, fresh fruit, and uh, a couple of scrambled eggs and um, turkey sausage. So I usually eat that almost every single morning. And, um, and from after breakfast, I would hang out, play with my daughter and my wife. And then after that, we, um, I go to the gym. And then I work out for a couple hours. And then when I finish the, at the gym, I come back, shower, and then I hang out with my wife and my daughter all day until they go to sleep. And when they go to sleep, I go back and write again. When you do the gym, I would love to know because I have to, to, to improve myself in this field. What is the purpose behind doing gym for you? Well, one is fitness and being in shape. I think about not dying. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to keep myself in great shape so I don't die. And, um, the ultimate goal is um, I like to look good in my clothes. Okay. So it's like a personal thing as well. You know, like I like to look a certain way. But the ultimate goal is so I can perform at a high level on the football field. So I think about what I need to do to continue to be the best in my profession. So when do you, um, when you work out, do you think about the goal in NFL? Yes. And uh, at the end, because I was thinking about Mohamed Ali, mm -hmm. and he was telling that, a journalist started to ask him, 
how many, um, how do you say? Bench press. Y yes, do you, you do? And he answered, I, I, I don't know because I start to count when, I, when it's hard. How do you know when you have to stop? That's a tough question because... Um, because sometimes you do something, it starts to become hard, but you can continue. Oh yeah, because... How do you uh, find the balance between uh, pushing, pushing is, yourself and respecting yourself? Well, I always push myself until I feel like um, <laughs> I went as far as I could go. And then the next day, I, if I do that thing again, I push myself to go further than I did and then further than that. So each time, uh, I don't overdo it. So I push myself and beat what I did last time. And then the next time I do that same drill, I push myself to beat that. And then I push. So that way, it's always room to, be, to improve. And I'm always trying to improve. And then um, there's a difference between being um, brave and courageous and being an idiot, <laughs> you know, so, um, you know, you don't want to kill yourself, but there's always, because I always say, um, like, raise your hand, high as you can, now raise it a little bit higher. See, you got a little bit extra that you can <laughs> raise your hand. So everybody, you tell them raise their hand as high as they can, but then you say raise it a little bit higher, everybody goes a little bit further. So I just think that there's a little bit more that you could do each time. And do you think the success is in, is in this zone? Yes, because there's a lot of people that get to that zone and they give up. The people who can break through that threshold and keep pushing and keep pushing are the ones that find the most improvement and go places that others will not work to get there. According to you, why? Because, for example, a lot of people who will see these interviews, they will understand the principle. They will say, oh, it's a great idea, I have to push myself. But they will not do it. According to you, why? Uh, discipline. Um, I think there's a... Um, I think a lot of times people say they want something, but it's not really what they want. Uh, they think that's what they want. When, until you find out what it is you really want in life, you won't work as hard as you can to get there. Um, so like if I want to climb a mountain, if I want to go out and go walk up a mountain, which is what I really don't want to do, <laughs> when it gets hard getting closer to the top, I'm going to turn around and go down because going it's to the top of, is not my passion, it's not what I really want to do. So everyone has to figure out what their mountain is and what's at the top that they're really trying to get to. Because once you figure that out, when things get hard, you look up, you look down, what's up there is more important than what you left behind. So um, you keep going. So I think it's figuring out where you actually want to go. And is that really what you want or is that what everybody else wants for you? Mm. So you are saying that the more I know where I want to go, the more I will have motivation to face, to have reached challenges. That's right? Yes. Okay. Um, we talked a little bit about that yesterday, about uh, the money and finance. First of all, I would love to know what did you feel uh, when you started to earn money? Because as an entrepreneur, it was not the same way. It was more step by step. So <laughs> it's different to um, because you, you see the money coming slowly. Yeah, I but think for you, what, how it was? I think for athletes, it, it's, it's like an entrepreneur because our body is our business. So you start training your body from high school all through college and you don't really get paid for that yeah. journey until you get to the NFL. So it's like you're getting rewarded for 10 years of work at one time. So I think that's the thing that people really don't realize about athletes is that to get where they want to go, it's constantly training, constantly making sacrifices just to become a professional athlete. So you put in time that no one really notices before you're a professional, and then all the time that you put in to get there is what you get paid for. But to get paid, you know, it feels great. <laughs> you know, you go, you go, um, you know, like uh, in early stages, you know, you think about buying material things because those are things that you always saw and you think those things make you more of who you really are, but it really doesn't. So, you know, you want to buy the best cars, the best shoes, the best everything. But at the end of the day, I'm still Martellus just in a BMW. The BMW doesn't make me more of Martellus. So, and um, how did you feel when you understood that it's not that your happiness is not about the money? Oh, I felt great because I felt like I felt free, liberating. Basically, I felt like um, when money's, you know, money's not the, money is a tool. You know, you use money. You don't let money use you. Um, so for me, understanding that money wasn't the the happiness wasn't found in money, but it was found in my relationships. You know, with my my family or you know my friends or you know accomplishing goals and dreams. That's where the true happiness comes from. If money is brought into that, it's cool. If you make money doing the things you love, but the things I love, I, I love to do the things I 
love because it's not because of the money. I just love to do those things. Money is just a, a tool uh, to achieve it. Yeah, to achieve it. If we have lessons for young people um, who earn money and they have to understand how they can manage it, so uh, what can be your advice? Um, when it comes to money, I would say um, save it. Um, I think you um, you have to enjoy it. So it's okay to buy yourself nice things. But just because you could buy something doesn't mean that you can afford it, mm. you know, which is two different things. Like, you know, a lot of times people go buy, you know, a Ferrari, but the maintenance, you know, the upkeep, the gas, you know, just taking care of it. You can't really afford to upkeep that car where if you went and got your uh, um, Toyota Camry, you can afford that car. You can do everything in it. You could always keep it up. You can always get it um, checked up. You can always get new tires, wherever you may need. So. Um, for them, it's figuring out what you can afford and what you just or what you're just buying. So um, save your money. And um, how how many percentage do you say that? Percentage? Yeah, percentage. Do you uh, save? Well, I try to save as much as possible. Um, But what do you what do you advise? I always I always say how many percent? I always say I don't have no percentage of it because everybody's. A little different and my percentage is a lot lower than the guys that I work with so I would say that you're supposed to live below your means uh, which means um, you know just because you could buy a five million dollar house doesn't mean that you have to you could go get your seven hundred thousand dollar house and be just as happy um, so I'll just kind of do I just try to live below my means mm. and do you um, increase the percentage of what you save each year Yes. How much do you increase in the percentage? Um, depends on how much I make. Okay. So I try to, I mean, honestly, you like to at least save at least 60 to 70 percent of your money and live off 30 percent of it if you can. Mm. But it's that's making sacrifices. It's like, you know, um, like my monthly budget, you know, it's like a little bit over a thousand dollars a month, you know, for me. Mm. Um, but that's extremely low depending on how Um, regarding how much money that I make, you know? Yes. Do you spend without thinking and at the end you see what you did or you are someone to, and you manage every day what is coming and what is going outside? I manage, so I, I, um, in my account I manage everything that I do not just spend without thinking. I always think it through because there's sometimes I, um, I, was, I'm, I do the 100% thing. Like sometimes I see something and like, you know, I look at it and then I kind of want it, but I don't want it 100%, so I don't buy it. Okay, it's the same thing. Yeah, it's the same thing. I apply it to everything in life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what is your purpose? What do you want in this life? Um, my purpose, I feel, is to um, communicate with the world through um, creativity. So basically, uh, whether it's a book, whether it's a film, movie, cartoon, wherever it is, there's a message, you know, that needs to be communicated that I'm trying to tell someone And what else. is this message? Let's imagine that I can help you to to inspire one billion, of, one billion of people. What do you want to, what what is this message? Well, the, each, each message varies depending on where I am in life at that time. No. <laughs> um, but right now it's just that um, dreams come true. Okay. So, um, The message that I'm trying to give give to people is that if you you could dream it, then you could do it. Um, if you could imagine it, then you're already on your way of getting there. Um, and if you want to go do it, just go do it. All everything starts with one step. No matter where we want to go, if you go backwards or you want to go forward, it starts with one step. So just getting people to understand that it takes one step closer. Every time you take a step, you're one step closer to your dream. Do you do every day steps to be? Closer to the, to your dreams. Um, that's the only direction I go. So I never go back this way. I always go. Uh, sometimes I have to step back to see everything. You know, I was like, oh, hold on a second. You know, what did I do right there? What can I do to make that better? And um, but I'm, I'm always walking in the same direction. That's always I'm always focused on going towards where my dreams are. When you when you think about your dreams, do you have a kind of a date? I mean. Um For example, do you say I want to do cartoons in one year, or do do you do that but without date? Yeah, I do. Um, 
I call it life planning. So like 10 years, I want to be here. 20 years, I want to be there. I usually stick to like the eight to 10 year range because there's so much that could change. But I usually have like, you know, goals within. Um, but sometimes um, I think connecting and networking with people is very important because that could speed up your, your dreams. Yes, because and it's a very important question. According to you, how much time do you have to invest on meeting people and in producing cartoons and everything? Because you can, you, can, you can take all your time to meet people and you just have connections, but you don't have to, to give. Yeah, so I think product is more important than the connections because if you don't have the, pr you can make the connections, but if your product isn't ready, then the connection is not worth anything. So the, the connection is worthless. Um, I tell people to focus on going places that or that will be with like-minded people. So if I want to go to something, I'd rather go to an event that has, you know, movie producers and actors than to go to one with a bunch of entrepreneurs who do restaurants. Mm -hmm. Because that connection for me is not the best connection. But the you don't know. <laughs> yeah, you don't, I mean, you don't know. But I know that in yeah. this one, this connection, in this area, meeting these type of people are the ones that are trying to do the same thing I'm doing or doing what I'm doing. So those connections are a little bit more powerful than the ones of a guy who runs a car wash, you know, who yes, may know a lot of people who wash a lot of cars, who may have encountered tons of people washing their cars. But I try to put myself in areas of like-minded people. And it's amazing, just a question. How do you know when you have to speak to someone? I don't seek, I, me, I personally, I don't think you seek people out. I think it just kind of happens. Okay. Um, it's just, just fate. Um, so like if you go somewhere or you're with someone, it just, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. Um, um, you cross paths with them. Sometimes you cross paths with somebody 150 times, but you never have spoken to them before. But then the 151st time, you guys talk. But that time that went past between not talking, you were developing and growing as a person. Mm. So that 151st time, it was right on because it's right where your mind was. Because sometimes you can meet people too early and you don't really know what to do with that connection. Or you can meet people too late where you already passed up you know, because mm. there's so much growth in people and you grow every single day. We're growing tremendously. So you try to want to, you just want to continue to grow and you just hope that that growth that you're on meets people at the right time. Cool. Um, it's like you and I, if, if um, say you weren't doing films yet yes. and, um, and we met, then this would never happen. You know, if we met a couple of years ago, it was just been like a good conversation. Yes, but since we met where I'm doing film, you're doing film, we're both in the same mindset of motivating and inspiring others, then the connection worked. Exactly. And maybe we will be able to create something together to have an impact in the world. We don't know. Yes. In this topic, I would love to know because it's a question sometimes for people. Uh, do you want to work only with people who have the same mindset than you? No, I, I like, me personally, I like to, well, I like to take people from different disciplines. So, like, I work, kind of work with all designers. Um, I think design is the, like, basically design is in everything. So, like, the way you design your day and your calendar, that's by design. Your lifestyle is by design. Um, not just when you make a table that's designed, but it's, you know, it's created through design, but you create your day through design. When you lay out your clothes, the clothes you put on, you do that by design, you know, or... Um, the way you write or the way you put your stuff in your backpacks and the way you neatly place everything that's by design. So we live by design, but people don't really know that design is living. So for me, I try to, um, I like like-minded people. I do work with like my, I like winners. I like people who are ambitious and people who are go, if they're not, um, you know, focus driven, then I usually don't hang out with them because, um, it's a waste of time. For so you. yeah, I wouldn't say like it's yeah, a waste of time, but you want people who around you there are um, there are better than you. Like I want to surround myself with smarter people, people who are smart. Because if I'm the smartest person in the room, then we have a problem. <laughs> you exactly. know, so I want people who are smarter than me, uh, people who are more creative than me, um, people who know a little bit more around me. Um, so that way they bring me up to a higher level as well, and I pick them up as well. Because you can't be the greatest at every single thing that you do. So you believe that you can be the greatest in one field, but the people around you ha ha has to be the greatest in other fields and you build together. Yes, that way you can focus on what you do great. Mm. They can focus on what you do great. Then you take all those slices of genius. It's like a pizza. So you may have two slices of genius in one thing, 
Our album may have a couple slices of the genius and everything, you know, so we take all those slices of the genius and we make a good pizza, mm. you know, because some days I may only have one slice, but one slice of pizza can't help us all. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. And there are many people maybe who are watching us now. If someone can help you to achieve one of your main, very main important dream, um, what do you need to, to achieve what you want? Uh, for, for me right now, it's just about um, opportunity. Um, okay. Sometimes just the opportunity to show your, showcase your work. And once you get the opportunity, then I feel like I could take it from there. And I think I got a great opportunity coming up that I came out here for looking for the opportunity on my own and then and were, was able to get it. And then I got another opportunity to come back and take it from there. So I'm super excited about that. Um, but I think just um, me being prepared for the opportunity was the biggest thing. Okay, and you, the first project is Cartoon now, the main project you want to, to, to put to the next level? Well, no, it's not just, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a system. Yeah, it's a lot. It's um, so it's not one dimensional. It's um, it's like a spider web. There's a lot of things connected to many things that ultimately is connected to one thing, which is the spider. And I'm the spider, and I have all the webs. I think that's a good description. <laughs> <laughs> But overall, you know, the 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 goal is to um, to create in several in several facets, um, so that. Because um, other people, to communicate with everyone, everybody communicates differently. Some people like art, some people understand cartoons, some people is books, and some people is... Um, you, you want to explore everything to, yes. to reach people in different ways. Yes. Okay, what are your mentors? Uh, so it'll be um, Dr. Seuss. Um, I love Dr. Seuss and the way he rhymed and the way he did everything. Shel Silverstein was also Arthur that I love. Tim Burton, all his films are, you know, kind of what inspired me in his story, where he came up, because he used to be at Disney, but then he left Disney and started doing his own thing. Um, you know, there's Ed Catmull and John Lasseter, who's at DreamWorks. I mean, not at DreamWorks, that's at um, Pixar. Um, Jim Carrey. Okay. Um, I love Jim Carrey. I always thought he was extremely funny. Um, Richard <laughs> Pryor. There's just a long list of people that I looked up to. And when you are inspired by someone, uh, do you do something to... I, I believe that if you are inspired by someone, it's because you have the same thing inside. Do you do something to, um, to develop what they have inside you? Do you understand my question? Yeah, you're trying to say if there's something that... Um, Well, if I see, say, if I see Tim Burton, there's something about him that I feel like I have inside of me. Yes. But how do I bring that out of myself? Yes. Um, yes, I do believe that um, you do that. I think there's a lot of people that influence you are already part of your DNA. Mm. Um, so, like, some stuff I create may look like something Tim Burton would do, but I grew up watching Tim Burton, and I love him so much that it's just a part of me. Yes. Um, same thing, like Will Smith. I love Will Smith from the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, <laughs> everything. So there's a lot of times people tell me, like, hey, you're, you're like Will Smith a little bit. I'm like, it's because I grew up watching Will Smith so long that... Yeah, so I watched an, an interview uh, with you this morning. Uh -huh. It was a short interview on a show, I, don't, I forget the name. And I was thinking you, you look like in you know, the energy of Will Smith. It was amazing. The uh -huh. way you speak, the way you... It's maybe more about energy. Yeah. Because I, I love Will Smith. I always grew up watching Will Smith, and I'm like, you know, so... And I, <laughs> I was thinking, I was wondering, do we have to be black to have this, uh, this kind of energy? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh you, you mean because it comes from the soul, but I think everybody has it. If you, uh, <laughs> it's just a little bit different. Um, because just this morning, I, I, I asked my, my girlfriend, do you know a, a white man with this kind of energy? Let me think. <laughs> I mean, Jim Carrey's energy is amazing. Um, there's a lot of guys who are amazing. But like Will Smith charisma and, and energy is totally different. But I think it's because we're all kind of influenced by the same yeah. Richard Pryor, all those people that we grew up watching, you know? And, yeah. and I think we all have a little bit of that in us. So we all kind of go in the same way because he's influenced by them. He changes up a little bit. That makes him Will Smith. So I'm influenced by Will Smith. I change it up a little bit, but that's what makes me more intellectual. Um, so I think it's just a. Um, I just think it's. I don't know how it works, you know. <laughs> And um, because you are inspired by them, do you do something to meet them personally? 
Yeah, I've, I've met, um, sometimes I do weird stuff, like, um, so Ed Catmull is the guy at Pixar. He uh, wrote a book called Creativity, Inc., and he was doing a book signing here in California, but I was in Chicago, and I had a friend that was at the book signing, so when he got next to Ed, I, he called me on the phone, he just gave it to Ed, and I started talking to him on the phone. <laughs> so um, I email him, um, I track him down by email. Um, sometimes, it's, you know, they respond, and sometimes they, they don't, and... But I always try to, or if I'm in the same room with him, I make it a... Um... For example, let's imagine that um, we want to meet Will Smith and just talk about all this stuff, inspiration, imagination, and how we can inspire the world. How we can do that? Well, first I would call, I would make a call to a lady named Denise, who's a PR um, expert. She knows pretty much everybody or who they work for. So then I would have her call Will Smith PR, uh, represent representation and then they were going to call them I would try to get a contact somehow for to set up a meeting and then I would you know end up trying to set up a lunch with him so basically reaching out the first step I think a lot of people feel like people are unreachable or unattainable but um, people always love when people reach out to them because you're interested in them and you want to have a conversation if they have the time they will do it you just and yes it's a it's a tough question the time yeah because it depends a lot on I believe in the value you will ha you will give and um, when you are uh, a celebrity or famous or the top in in your in your field you mm -hmm. have a lot of people who want to be with you just because you are famous and I imagine that Will Smith receive a lot of fan messages of people yeah. who are um, how do you say Infatuate. Infatuated. Yes, infatuated by him. According to you, how do you show to someone that um, you are not a f you are not um, in infatuated just because you respect him for his work and just want to uh, talk with him and maybe see how you can contribute to his dream? Uh, I think it's when you reach when you reach out to that person how what you what you write or what you're doing to reach out to them so if i send an email and the email is going to say man i appreciate everything you do you influenced me a whole lot you know through my lifetime um i love your work and there's some things about you that i'm inspiring and find that i'm finding myself that i would love to talk to you um to see how um if there's any more information you could tell me about your journey and how you know so i could tell you about my journey and we could um, break bread together. So basically, you know, uh, come off in a sincere way. Um, don't be too over the top, you know, like, oh my God, it's Will Smith. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, you know, don't, you know, you, sometimes a lot of people want to be cool. You know, what they think is cool is, but cool is measured. Um, people decide what's cool and what's not cool. Um, so you never really want to be cool because cool is decided by society and when everything when society is decided something is usually terrible <laughs> so um you want to <laughs> i'm laughing because i i asked to darren hardy he's a ceo of success magazine uh -huh. what is the best way to become a loser uh -huh. and um, <laughs> he answered me david if you want to become a loser it's easy just look at what people are doing and do the same yeah <laughs> yeah exactly so just if you doing everything else that everyone else is, if you're doing what everyone else is doing, then you're just like them. You know, everybody wants to be different or try, everyone tries to be different, but really being different is just being you. You know, Dr. Sue said, no one can be youer than you. And uh, Oscar Wilde- Yeah, you are the best version of yourself. Yeah. And nobody yeah. can become who you are. Yes, and Oscar Wilde said, um, be yourself because everyone else is taken. Yeah. You know, so just, you know, being yourself, which is cool, you know, <laughs> but trying to be something that you're not, that's not cool. Yes. And um, for example, how do you, you want to create more and more movies and cartoon and you are inspired by many mentors? How do you find the difference between being them and finding inspiration from them to being you? Oh, the key is I never really want wanted to be them. Um, I enjoy their work. So for me, I think that. Um, is so basically it's just like um, making a gumbo, making a soup. Um, so basically you still, you're the base, but you just take a little bit of them 
take a little bit of him, take a little bit of her. You sprinkle all that in there, which makes you you, you know, because there's things that influence you that or change you through the culture. So um, I don't think that you imitate. I think there's some things that, like, there's something to completely knock somebody off, to rip something off and do it just like them. Mm. But it's another thing to learn from their experiences and do what they did better. So when you try to do something better, it's like the it's light. Evolution. It's evolution. It's innovation. So it's like the light bulb. There's been so many light bulbs made, but they're steady creating better ones and new ones. So they're not imitating the first light bulb. They're just making better light bulbs. They're like the telephone. Yes, there is a video that... Everything is remix, yes. and um, innovation is just remix. Yeah, that's because we missing we missed out on the enlightenment period because of the years that we were born. So there were times when people were creating to, to find solutions. So they had to create a light bulb because the only thing they had were candles. So they needed a better solution, or like like one of the best solutions that no one ever thinks about is the window screen, the screen that goes on outside the windows because people were dying from getting bit by insects. So for a solution, they had to build, create a window screen or, you know, the wheels. They had to find a better wheel. They make a better wheel. They make another wheel that's better than that. So because you always, so our, and what we're in our age, we're more about um, quick resorts. So we create um, technology. So what we're trying to do is just make it where you could do something quicker you know, faster, you know, or uh, eliminate the process of a middleman. Okay, I have a question for you because you are a creative guy. Uh, I, would love to, I would love to hear your answer. Let's imagine that we are in 200 years, maybe more. Five, 500 years. How do you imagine the world in 500 years? It depends because uh, right now they're taking uh, creativity out of schools, especially in America, like art and band and music and things. But are my question is, what kind of world do you want in 500 years? Uh, and me personally, I want to, um, I do want to drive a flying car. I, I would be lying. <laughs> I'd be lying if I said I didn't want to drive a flying car. Um, but, you know, in 500 years, I see, a, I see a world that, you know, that, that runs by computer. That, but it can go two ways. You want the humans to run the computers, not the computers to run the humans. So we're teetering on the edge where it's going to be a computer-driven society and the computers are more alive than the people. Mm. I just want to make sure that the people are a lot more alive than the computers because um, we give so much artificial intelligence to everything and people are so stuck looking down. And it might be in a generation where everybody walks around like this because their necks are stuck from texting so much. So everybody's going to be walking like this. Um, okay, it's a great hand. Do you want to add something to uh, the people who are watching us uh you know you know me i just well you don't know me really but you kind of know me now so um um give a, me a message directly to oh, the person who are looking the yes okay hey guys how you doing uh, <laughs> <laughs> i would say um i would just say like i told alvin last night the the journey now is is not to the adventure the adventure is in the journey you know, so because once you get to the destination, you got to figure out where you're going to go next. Great. Do, do you have a website to be followed or something like that? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm around the world, you know, Instagram and Twitter and stuff like that. And uh, the, I'm getting ready to launch my website, theimaginationagency.com. Um, but I, mean, I'll, I tell people not to really follow me, you know, I'll be around. I like to be behind the scenes. You know, I'm okay. like Batman. You know, I come in a smoke bomb. Poosh. I appear out of nowhere okay. in the shadows. We can blur you all in all these interviews. You can blur my face <laughs> and just listen to my voice. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was amazing. Yeah. Appreciate you.